Okay, this presentation is on relevant costs for the decision maker. This is the first of two presentations, and it's on Chapter 5. Now, the first thing we're going to look at very briefly is the decision-making framework. Um, and I think the easier you keep this, the better. And you can read about it in the text. They've got tons of extensive examples in there, and I, I honestly don't think it deserves that much, that much work. But, um, you know, outline the problem and its unknowns. Okay, so outline the problem, identify solutions, and get relevant, qualitative, quantitative information. Okay, which is important. There are a few things here. So identify solutions and gather relevant is the first word here that's important, and qualitative information as well as quantitative. And the point is when you make these decisions, it's based on more than just the numbers. You know, if you're going to lay off a whole bunch of people in a town and you're a major business there, you've got other concerns besides how the financials are going to affect you. Okay, if you if you get the town all upset about it, it's it's um you know you'll find out <laughs> really quick real quickly. So calculate relevant costs and benefits for each option. Select the one that maximizes the benefit and minimizes the cost and meets the uh, qualitative criteria, and then implement it. Okay, so basically what you do is outline the problem, gather information, calculate costs and benefits, select an op option, and implement. Okay, that's it. So if you want to look at more of this, you know, go right ahead. I'll make sure that you have a couple multiple choice questions on it, but it's not worth too much time. Okay, now the next piece is just on relevant information, um, and that is important on what's really relevant. And when you think of the word relevant, think of what makes a difference. Okay, if it makes a difference or if it would like influence a decision maker, then it's relevant. So here is um, relevant, relevant costs. Uh, they matter directly to the particular decision being made. Um, they help by by eliminating other things that you, you really don't have to take into consideration. I mean, the simpler a decision is, the better. The more information and the more stuff that you have in there, the more complicated it is, and it doesn't, ne doesn't necessarily add value. And it changes from decision to deci decision. What's relevant in this case may not be relevant to the next case, okay? So it matters to a particular decision being made. And the, then they've got a nice kind of classification here of types of relevant costs. The first one is differential, when it differs between one choice and another, okay? When a cost differs between one choice and another. That makes sense to me, okay? That, that to me, is the most um, important relevant cost. Uh, differential costs are also incremental or in addition to what's being occurred at present, okay? It helps sway you between options. Now, avoidable costs, we, we're going to use avoidable costs all the time here. If you can avoid a cost, then it only occurs under certain conditions. In contrast, an avoidable, unavoidable cost is present in both. Okay, for example, a fixed overhead is an unavoidable cost. If you make something in-house or if you buy it on the outside, you're still going to have that fixed overhead. Okay, and so since unavoidable cost is present in both options, then it doesn't matter and it's irrelevant, okay? So unavoidable costs are irrelevant, okay? And then the last one are future costs. If something happens, every relevant cost, and that's important, every relevant cost happens in the future, okay? A, any past cost is a sunk cost and therefore by definition irrelevant, okay? Um, not every future cost is going to be relevant to the immediate choice, but relevant costs occur, occur in the future, and our decisions are uh, for going forward options. So if you have, um, let's say that you bought a, a billion dollar spaceship yesterday, and it's been, and then that very next day it's, it's out of, um, it, it's, it's sort of irrelevant because they've developed something better, uh, that doesn't matter. It's in the past, so it's no longer relevant. Even though it was a big dollar amount, it was expensive to do and everything, it doesn't matter anymore. Okay, that'll take a little bit of um, practice to see. And here's a summary of a sunk cost. You know, a sunk cost does not impact decision making. We can't change what's happened in the past. Okay, you can't, you can't 
undo things or get them back. And it includes items like past purchases, cost of assets and expenses. All right, so anything that you did in the past is really just irrelevant. We can't change it. Okay, so sunk costs are excluded from relevant costs. All right, and relevant costs only happen in the future. Okay, here's an example. Um, this Paula's evaluating options are for her salespeople to connect with physicians working at clinics to promote key pharmaceutical products. In the past, they always went to the clinics and set up displays in a conference room so they could have a few moments of face-to-face -face time with physicians. And she's thinking about a less costly approach where the sales reps would video conference with the physicians instead. Okay, instead of doing the face-to-face -face thing. Um, some of the costs she gathered are listed below. Um, classify each cost as relevant or irrelevant and it's irrelevant, explain why. All right, so how much, how about lunch that's provided if it's in person or remote? Okay, if it's in, in either case, it's not gonna make, going to make any difference, so that would be irrelevant. Travel costs for salespeople to and from clinics. Um, if they do it online, they wouldn't have the travel costs, right? Okay, so this would be different. This would be a relevant cost here because it differs between the alternatives. I'm gonna make it a color here. Um, uh, cost of salespeople's time. Their compensation is a base salary plus commission on sales because if you, so if you use up their time, they're, they're sensitive to that because that's when they could have been earning a commission. This will, will this be the same in either case? The salespeople either have a face-to-face -face conference with physicians or they're there in person. Um, only the travel, right? Only the travel, only travel time would be relevant. Okay, and the cost of shipping sample products to the clinics if the salespeople remain remote. Uh, would that be relevant or irre irrelevant? Okay, it's differ, it differs, so this would be relevant. Because if we do it in person, then we don't have to sh shift the um, or ship the products. If we do it um, over the internet, then we are go going to have to ship the samples. Okay. And then the last thing that I just wanted to reference here quickly is the what's called the total cost approach. Um, there's you know you can list every single cost for each option. Okay, but then it, then you gotta you know you've gotta. And you really increase the complexity of that. So what you want to do is only list those things that make a difference and keep it simple. So we'll do that when we do all these problems. Okay, what we use is consider it like a special lens to view only the most pertinent cost. And this is called a differential approach. Okay, that's what it's called. Because um, we focus on costs that differ between alternatives. Okay, so now we're going to look at, and we're going to, they examine four types of management decisions within the context of relevant costing, and I think we might do one more together in class. We've got a lot of practice problems to go through, uh, some short and some a little bit longer, but after a while you really get the gist of this, and you'll be able to identify relevant from irrelevant costs uh, pretty quickly. So the four decisions we'll look at is like, do I insource something or outsource it? Okay, and this is also called make versus buy. Okay, make versus buy decisions. Do we keep a product line or do we drop it? All right, that's a big decision. Like if it looks like one product line is losing money, should we just get rid of it and then would everything be better? That's the question. And then product mix <clears throat> with or without constrained resources. And another really important one is special orders. Uh, one other one I wanted to add in here. Sorry. Uh, keep or replace equipment. I'm going to put that here. Keep keep or replace equipment. You know, do we do we mend something? Like, do you reline a furnace and a foundry, or do you get a new furnace? That that's the kind of question that is. All right. Okay. So the first one, insource versus outsource, or make or buy. 
So we're looking at whether to manufacture a product or buy it from a supplier. And this can be done using the total cost approach or the relevant cost approach, but we're going to use the relevant cost approach, okay? Not total cost. And here's an example of, of some of the things that you have to worry about. Um, what, how about the timeliness? You know, if I have somebody else do it, will they get it to me on time? Can I do something else with that area in the factory? Can I make something else there? Is the, is the supplier that we're using um, financially stable? Or do we have to worry about finding a replacement supplier because they're falling apart, you know? Uh, does the supplier respect the environment? This may be uh, an ethic in your business. How does the supplier treat employees? Okay, those are all things that you'd want to consider. So especially like if you're going overseas and having something manufactured someplace else, um, you'd want to make sure that like the garbage is taken care of ethically, that it doesn't end up in the ocean or in people's backyards, and that they're not employing 10-year-olds, for example. Okay, that's the kind of thing that um, shareholders get pretty excited about. So we've got three categories. We're going to take the type of processes. I'll sh I should give you an example of this. A core process is something that a company has to control in source and not outsource. So this has to do maybe with the company's strategy uh, or what differentiates a company. Okay, what's special about it? You wouldn't want to give that to somebody else to do. Um, the a critical process, those can be potentially outsourced to reputable best-in-class vendors. Okay, you can do that if, you, if you've got the right people. Um, and then the next one would be a commodity process, and those can be outsourced without losing comp competitive advantage. For example, um, something like... Uh, house cleaning okay if you, if you hire outside cleaners versus having your own okay that would be something that i mean lots of people do that payroll is another good example you know the payroll uh companies that are out there are fantastic and they do it all the time and they keep keep up with all those laws so maybe that's the way to do it okay so the degrees of relinquishing control um let's let's start over here on the right we've got in-house locally managed to company-owned overseas services. So maybe we've got a, a, a factory in in, um, in China that manufactures for us, uh, or a joint venture with a vendor, okay? Or finally, it's completely outsourced. So in this whole continuum, the amount of control that we're relinquishing is increases as it goes on, okay? And offshoring is when you're using a service provider in another country. So here's a, this was a long example, but I just want to show you, I like the format of this, and this is what we'll be using. We've got an example here of a, of a plan to insource something versus outsource it. <clears throat> so you can see if we make something ourselves, we're going to have direct material, direct labor, variable overhead. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, okay, so we've got variable cost per square yard, 30,000 yards. The variable costs are 50. 58.5. Now in this case, they're putting the fixed manufacturing overhead in here. I don't have the facts on this, but maybe this would be an avoidable cost. If we could get rid of it, then it would be relevant. But our total cost uh, to, in, to keep making it ourselves is 64,500. Now if we outsource it, we're going to buy it for $2.15 a unit. And see what's important here is, see this says 215, and if you compare that to the 195, then it's really clear we should do it right now, but you can't, you've got to take all those costs into consideration, okay? So here's our unit cost, 215. We've got 30,000 square yards, so our total variable cost is 64.5. And then here you can see they've added the fixed overhead again. So this is a total cost approach. Um, the 6,000 could really be eliminated because it's the same in either case. But the fact is that there's still a $6,000 difference you know, not this 6000 but a $6,000 difference between the two. Okay, yeah, the example is about a guy that you could either buy sod from a supplier outside or you grow it yourself. Okay, and there, there are a lot of um, qualitative considerations here too. Like their own sod is of a higher quality, it doesn't have as many weeds, it's got all kinds of other issues like that. Now this one, let me show this here, this is the total cost approach. Okay, and this one 
is the just the relevant incremental cost approach. So it's a, a good example of that. And you can see what they did. We've got our variable costs here, <clears throat> and here's our purchase costs, but they got rid of the fixed manufacturing overhead. Okay, and we still come up with the same $6,000 difference. Okay, you're clear on that? So here's the here's the uh, the other one with the six thousand, but it's the same in both cases, so it's irrelevant. We don't care. But here's the differential cost where we're just looking at the things that are that are different and they're relevant costs. So that would be so you still have the same six thousand dollar difference. Okay. So no matter which method is used, insourcing is most more lucrative. Potentially more compelling is whether uh -huh, my lower back pain is worth giving up the extra 6000 oh, by um, producing the turf myself. Or maybe there's another plan where you could just hire somebody else to do the, the direct labor costs while you could su supervise. Okay. Now I'm going to do one more here, and then I'll put the rest in um, in another presentation. And you should do some problems in between here j just to, um, you know, to act exercise some of this. So here's one to keep versus drop a product. And this is determining whether to keep or drop a product line or maybe a business segment. Maybe you'd want to get rid of a whole segment because it looks like they're losing money. Um, any fixed costs avoided, okay, avoidable fixed costs uh, w would be larger. What, what you're concerned about, you're looking that, that the um, avoidable fixed costs would need to be larger than the contribution margin giving up. Don't worry about this. Let's look at some numbers first. Um, just remember that when you do drop a product line or a business segment, you're losing that contribution margin. That's gone. So if you have other costs that are coming in then, okay, like an avoidable um, or an unavoidable fixed cost, then those costs are still going to be there. Okay, when fixed costs don't change from one scenario to the next, they're not a point of differentiation. They're not relevant. But if they do change, then they are. Okay, so here we've got this company makes robotic toys. And they've got RoboDog, which fetches your charging cables and snacks. Um, however, it's sustained losses. Can't imagine why. And the company is now considering dropping it. And direct fixed costs, so direct, the word direct here means those costs are tied to this product. Okay, so direct fixed costs of 110 within the total 140,000 could be saved as a result. In other words, they're avoidable. That 110 will go away, but we're still going to be, still have $30,000 here. Okay, the difference. Revenue and cost data are as follows. So here we've got sales of 240 and variable costs and a contribution margin of, of 120. And then we've got fixed costs of 140 and an operating loss of 20,000. So here it's tricky because you can see we're making a, we've got $120,000 of cash right there. Okay. That's, that's cash in the contribution margin. And our fixed costs are 140,000. And that's where the 20,000 comes in. So you really need to find out more about this 140. We know that 110 is avoidable that we can get rid of 110, but that still means there'd be $30,000 left here. So the question really is, is that 30,000, are those allocated costs or are they are they directly tied with this product line? Okay, actually it doesn't matter. You're still gonna have them in the in the whole, um, whole company. Okay, so here, here it is. So if, so we're gonna, if we could drop it, we'll have no sales, and no variable costs and zero contribution margin, but we're still going to have those fixed costs. All right, so the company, we were $20,000 negative before, now we're 30,000, so they would be $10,000 worse off. Okay, and this is always gonna be the case in just about all of these problems that what we're looking at are, are the fixed costs. Okay, fixed costs are gonna be the big issue. And are they avoidable or unavoidable? Okay. Now, if a, if a manager is looking at a, a financial statement and they've got three segments on it, and one of those segments is losing money, then it, you know they're going to think, well, if I get rid of this, I can l get rid of this loss. Well, not necessarily. Okay, it depends on on what's in these fixed costs. That's that's the important thing.
Okay. Okay, so finally, since the company makes a positive contribution margin and they cover all their fixed costs and some additional allocated fixed costs, they would suffer an additional $10,000 operating loss by dropping this one product line. And the remaining 30000 of fixed costs that are not avoided by dropping it must still be covered by other products within the company. Okay, so let's do some problems now, and um, at least these two, okay, and then come back and, and we'll look at the rest.